Welcome to the show. I'm Maggie. I'm Mike. And we're Friends on Fire. And we're on a mission to get friends to talk about money. Mike, should we admit that we just spent 40 minutes effing around with microphones trying to get our remote recording set up better? Uh, I think you just did. Can't take it back now. (laughs) And I, I know this is particularly upsetting to you because it is Sunday evening. We agreed to record at 8 p.m. It is now 8.40 p.m. And I know we are nearing your bedtime. Yeah, so. this is cutting into my Discovery Channel watching time, and Aww. I won't forget it. I'm so, sorry. So, Maggie. I feel like it was sort of like an episode of the Discovery Channel in how much we just learned about microphones and Zoom. You've and never Max. watched Discovery Channel, have you? Why? Well, it's a lot of animals, I believe. Mm. Oh, okay. So, no, Maggie. I watch a lot of Discovery Channel. Yeah, what's up? All the counties have issued stay-at-home orders, right? Yep. And I haven't left my neighborhood in two weeks. I gave myself a haircut yesterday. How do I look? Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah? There's like a huge gap on the side of your head. Is no, that there's not. To- You're kidding. It looks good. What? How did you do the long parts? Uh, With scissors, Britta helped me. Oh, nice. Did you like watch a video or you just yeah, wing it? Watch, and like I learned everything, I watched YouTube. Nice. But okay. it looks okay and... It was kind of easy. I'm not sure I'll ever go back to Grey Clips again. Mike, Greg and I have been having so many conversations about how many things that we think this quarantine and sort of new way of life situation is going to change for many people longer term. I think a lot of people are going to realize what they really need and how many things they can do on their own and just sort of the idea of consumption and how much they were consuming versus what they really need, which I think is for me and what I kind of care about and value in life, it's kind of a nice little silver lining of, you know, this thing we're all going through together around the world. I totally agree with you. I was just walking with my husband earlier and outside and there was an article he was telling me about. And he was like, have you read the article I sent you? And I was like, no, that's why we're walking together. So you can just tell me about all these articles you're reading and then I don't have to read them. But it was about um, how we are living a lot like we are starting to appreciate and kind of live a lot like our grandparents used to live in many ways, just a simpler times, you know, less consumption, more appreciation for kind of simple, basic things and less of a need to always have so much stuff and always be doing so many things. And again, I personally like it. Yeah, I think it's great. All right. Okay. Can I read a quick uh, comment that I got from someone this morning? Let's hear it. A friend of mine texted me this morning and said she was catching up on our podcast and we had recently advised her to cash out a whole life insurance policy because majority the majority of whole life insurance policies are a scam and a bad idea for most people. I think that's fair to say, right? For all people? Uh, I think there are much better uses of your money than whole life yes. plans. So point is... Mike had done a whole analysis for her, convinced her to cash it out. It was totally the right thing to do. And she was saying how like now she has, you know, that much more in her emergency fund because they did cash out this huge policy that they'd been paying a lot of money into monthly for a few years. Um, and then she followed on by saying, and this just made my morning, but you, I haven't even told you this, Mike. She followed on by saying, you and Mike have made a big impact on our lives. Incredibly grateful. We are all caught up on expense tracking and it's working. Keep doing what you're doing. And then she had a fist bump emoji. And I was like lying in bed this morning reading it. And I was literally like fist bumping in the air thinking like, yeah, this is ex-. I was telling my husband, I was like, this is exactly why we are doing this. We are very passionate about this. We care. It genuinely makes me so happy to know that we had a meaningful impact on someone else's life and their happiness level and their lifestyle and, you know, just how they're going to live their lives. And to be able to have an impact on that is incredibly meaningful and just, it means a lot to us. So That's thank awesome. you. Just wanted to share that. It's a great story. Thank you for sharing, Maggie. Yeah. I hope that's worth you being up past your bedtime to hear, Mike. It is not my bedtime yet, to be clear. I know, but we're nearing it and I can tell you're getting, you know. Anxious. It's just making you nervous. Anxious, yeah. So let's jump into a topic that we thought would be very timely and helpful for people. Thought we would talk about groceries and how to sort of think about and save money in that line item within your budget. Um, Because it can be a pretty big line item for many people. 
right now everyone's stuck at home. I've heard so many people say that their kids are like eating them out of house and home, that they're cooking more than they ever have. So, you know, it's a great time to talk about groceries. So let's do it. Did I tell you about my neighbors and how much their grocery bill is, Mike? No. Okay. First off, I love my neighbors. They're like the coolest people I know. And they have three young kids, all under the age of five or six. They also have all girls, three girls. We have three girls. So our kids, though they're slightly different ages, play together a good bit. And they're just really cool and chill and we like them a lot. We were walking with social distance between us a few nights ago. And I had never mentioned the podcast to them. And we were talking about the market and just a bunch of financial things. And so I happened to mention it. And they were very interested in it. And then we were just talking about the value of talking to people about money. And I don't know how we got on groceries, but somehow we were started talking. They brought it up and I said something about how much our grocery bill is. I was like, oh, I know how much ours is. We track it. I was like, you know, it's anywhere from $450 to $600 a month. And then the, the husband was like shocked and was like saying to his wife, he was like, I told you ours is ridiculously high. Guess how much theirs is, Mike? $1,000? It's like two grand a month. How is that even possible? And here's the deal. They rarely ever eat out. We initially bonded with them because their whole family is vegan. They rarely eat out. They do eat a lot of organic and just not processed foods. And so they're buying a lot of nice, high quality foods. Like she was saying. Like what? I don't know. What could possibly be? 24 karat gold something i don't know this blows my mind because like the price of avocados don't range that greatly are they spending like ten dollars an avocado i don't know they she said they they buy a lot of their stuff from costco and they you know buy it in bulk and who knows but it is one of the many things that inspired this episode because i was i was trying to kind of quickly rattle off to them how our grocery bill is what it is because they were kind of saying like just as you say how is their bill two thousand they were looking at me like how is your bill five hundred dollars in full disclosure, in the month of March, which I just did expense tracking for March, our grocery bill was close to $900. How? Well, my theory is we did do some stocking up trips in that. So we have a lot of dry food in our house right now, way more than normal. So before some, when the, some of the Corona scare stuff was happening, I was not stocking up on toilet paper, but I was stocking up on just a lot of like snacks and kind of dry foods, like non-refrigerated non-perishables. And so we do, I have, you know, weeks worth of that stocked up at our house. Yeah, but we did that too and I did not spend $900. We shopped the same spot. I don't know. I mean, like $100 of that was Soylent. Oh my God. Which is a whole separate episode that we're not going to get into here. All right. I feel like we're getting off track. Okay. We need to focus on the advice. Hey, before we do that, how much are you spending on average for groceries, Mike, you and your family of So in March, we spent $572 on groceries, and we also did stock up trips. And then in 2019, we averaged $510 a month for groceries. I'm just pulling mine up right now. You may even hear the mouse clicks. So this month was 857, but I also had like, sometimes it's wonky because it's like there was a trip at the beginning and the end of the month. Oh yeah, that's it. So, (laughs) So that's it. So our average over the past six months was $592. But like to give you an example, last month was $477, even though this month was $900. So it's like, you know, it kind of, it ebbs and flows. But on average, it's about $600 for a family of five. That's not too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. And when you're looking at the costs for your groceries, hopefully you listen to our expense tracker episode and you are tracking your expenses. I like to take the number of people times the number of meals, times the number of days to get your total individual meals, and then divide the cost of your groceries by that to get a cost per person per meal. It gives you something to track. It kind of gives you the context for if you're spending $10 per person per meal, that's a lot. But if you're doing things wisely, you can get this down to a dollar, two dollars, like very reasonable costs. I actually remember you saying that and I was like, when we were doing expense tracking and we were talking about groceries and you had told me that you broke it down per person per meal. And I was like, that's super intense. Like that's like, it was impressive, you know? So our point on groceries is this is an expense you can control. You can still eat well, organic, vegan, whatever might be important to you and save money. So let's jump into our top 
tips for saving on groceries? I think the first tip is that you have to believe it's possible. If you are used to spending $2,000 a month, you might look at a $500 grocery bill and think like, this is impossible. It can't be done. They can't be buying actual food with that amount of money. It is possible. Many people do it. True. The other thing which you just mentioned earlier is the importance of expense tracking. So a huge piece is being aware of things. When I'm doing my expense tracking throughout the month even, I'll see how much I've already spent on groceries and I'll think, do I really need more food? Because I've spent an awful lot of money, which means there's food somewhere in my house. I'm just not discovering it, realizing it, whatever it might be. Expense tracking is incredibly helpful. We highly recommend it. We've got an episode, was it episode number 17, all about expense tracking? I don't remember. You number the episodes. I think that's the number. In addition to expense tracking, we suggest you plan ahead, make a list, and do not go shopping when you're hungry or when you're hangry. Consider where you go shopping to. Whole Foods, I'm sure, has nice things. I've been there once or twice in my life. But most grocery stores have great quality food. And there are a number of different options that you have. We love Aldi and Trader Joe's. And if you think of Aldi as some cheap, barely food grocery store, I would encourage you just to go there once. Yeah. Um, Aldi and Trader Joe's, owned by the same company, great food, lots of organic options. Yeah, little known fact. Well, a lot of people might know this, but Aldi and Trader Joe's, not just the same company, but brothers. So there were two different brothers that founded each one of the companies. So they share a lot in common. Like jeans. <laughs> like DNA, yeah. They probably share their jeans too, because I bet they wear the same size jeans. But I'm bum bum. Okay. Uh, also, interesting fact I had never, ever been to Aldi prior to meeting Mike. And when we were talking about, ex- when we were doing expense tracking and doing our peer review, I saw how much he was spending on groceries and I saw how much I was spending on groceries, which was probably closer to eight or 900 a month before and I thought well I'm gonna go to Aldi and I didn't my first experience was a little mixed like I went with my husband it was a little mixed like there were some things we liked we were I was kind of unimpressed with some of the produce and fruit and some other things but then I went back and gave it another shot and I really like they have a ton of really great vegan products which I was super impressed by Um, their fruit and vegetables are pretty good quality and they're significantly cheaper than some other places there's stuff like bread and a lot of their dry goods are just significantly cheaper than anywhere else we're like diehard aldi fans we go once a week now and the thing about aldi and trader joe's is that they're much smaller supermarkets and so if you are used to going to a giant Publix where there's 50 aisles and every single variation of everything you could ever want it is going to take an adjustment when you go to aldi or trader joe's because there's just limited number of things but they are they are the things that you need and if you can just get used to eating the one or two types of peanut butter that they have at Aldi, you'll be super happy. And it's cheap. Yeah. So to be clear, I still buy Jif brand peanut butter and I buy it at Target, but I do buy many other things at Aldi. I think you're right. It's almost like a minimalist approach to grocery shopping. They have three types of granola to choose from. If I went to Publix, they have 30 types. Quite honestly, it's overwhelming. And so I kind of like the more minimal approach to the amount of choices and decisions that I have to make about things. And I've been really happy with the quality of everything. The other thing that is just worth (laughs) noting about Aldi, because it takes a minute for people to get used to this, bring a quarter with you because you need it to get a shopping cart. You put your quarter in, you get your shopping cart. When you put your shopping cart back into the little line of shopping carts and push the little uh, metal thing in, you'll get your quarter back. Also, not only do they not bag your groceries, they do not wait for you to bag your own groceries. They check people out so fast and they just pile that crap in your cart. They do a pretty good job not to like beat stuff up, but they pile it all in. And then there's this like holding section off to the side with a big counter that my kids like to stand on. And you can bag all your groceries there by yourself, but you're not utilizing their staff. And so they've got a very, very lean staffing model, which is what is making their prices cheaper. I'm okay with that, right? We talk about DIY stuff all the time on here. I'm okay put doing a little bit of extra work myself to save money on my grocery bill. So Definitely. But, but it takes this, some getting used to. This isn't an advertisement for Aldi, so uh, we should probably keep going with our yeah, tips, right? right. I think I also note, because I do think it is worth stating... 
I don't buy all my groceries at Aldi. Like I, we still go to Trader Joe's. There's certain products that we like from Trader Joe's. Yeah, us too. There's certain things from Target or Costco, but Aldi's my sort of like go-to every week. And then every few weeks, I'll go to one of those other stores and kind of stock up on other types of things I need. Next tip, be thoughtful about the cost of things. So one thing that I think is interesting when people grocery shop is that often they just sort of throw anything into their cart and they don't even look at the price of stuff. And like, I look at the prices of things when I grocery shop. I don't buy things that are out of season. If strawberries are, you know, over three or four dollars for a little container of them, I'll buy another fruit that's in season and that's cheaper. I look at the prices. I'll buy what's on sale. And just the idea of kind of being thoughtful of what the prices of things are and being flexible on what you're willing to buy um, based on what those prices are, I think can save you a lot. I also notice when I go shopping with my kids, they just bring me random things to put in the shopping cart. Usually they're unhealthy things. And sometimes they're not, though. It'll be like yogurt or something. And I'll ask them what the price is, and they usually have no idea. And then I will send them back and say, go find out what the price is and tell me what the other options are. And then why don't you make a decision about what you think we should get? Because I want them to start to understand that these things have costs associated with them. And I know sometimes I look like probably people judging me in the store when my kids bring me something and I ask them how much it costs and then I send them back. I'm like, I don't I don't really care. I'm teaching them lessons about real life. I think they admire you for that, not judge you for that. <laughs> it's not always the looks I feel like I'm getting, but whatever. On that same point, sometimes you might actually want to consider keeping your kids at home if you can. I find it very distracting when my kids are with me. Sometimes they're helpful, but most of the time they're just distracting and it is harder for me to kind of stay focused on paying attention to prices and paying attention to really getting what I need. When they're all there, I'm just frantically throwing things into the cart so that I can get the heck out of there. Another important tip is when you are shopping for things, look at the price per ounce or the price per unit on everything that you buy. This is the way that you can tell what's cheapest. Marketers are very good at changing the box design and the amount of product being given to you. But if you look at the cost per ounce, you can do an apples to apples comparison for every single thing you buy. And if you're worried about finding the best deal, look at this metric and you'll be saving money every time. I was buying some allergy pills for my husband a couple weeks ago at Walgreens and I was looking at the price per pill. It was literally double the price for the smallest container than if I bought basically a year's supply worth of allergy pills. And I was just shocked by the, the just the price difference, right? And so just paying the idea of paying attention um, to the price per ounce or the price per unit can save you a significant amount of money. Another tip is to be very thoughtful about when it matters to buy things that are organic versus not. So there's some foods like the Dirty Dozen that they say that are much more important to buy organic versus a lot of other things where it really doesn't matter. Aldi also actually has a lot of very well-priced organic products. And so it's a great example that organic doesn't always have to be expensive also. And just understand the labels of what you're buying and if it really means anything versus if it's just a sales tactic to make you pay more. And speaking of labels, the store brand is almost always going to be a significantly better deal than a branded product. And yes. chances are it's manufactured in the same place anyway, and you're getting the same yes. product. Yeah. It's so funny. I know I was mentioning Jif peanut butter earlier. I could probably list five things that I'm really name brand loyal to when it comes to food. Jif peanut butter is one of them. I'm not sure why. Maybe I, maybe you should, I should rethink try. rethink this. Have you tried the peanut butter at Aldi? I think I bought one of the Aldi brand peanut butters when I was doing my coronavirus stocking up, but I've not actually tried it yet. I thought if it was an extreme emergency, I could open this container of peanut butter. Okay, Maggie, I would like you to go get this peanut butter right now and try it. Well, I don't want to open it because I have a huge thing open from Costco of Jif, and it just could be like weeks until I need to open that next container. Maggie, this is hard hitting investigative reporting here. We need to test it out. How about we offer a follow-up on our next episode? Maggie, peanut butter lasts forever. It's like nine o'clock. I don't want to. Okay. Do you really want me to go get the peanut butter? Yes. It's going to take me a minute to find it. Okay. Go get it. Okay. Hold on. Okay. I found it. I was going to be like, oh, what if I can't find one? <laughs> All right. It's uh. It's peanut delight. <laughs> peanut delight. 
Yeah, really great store brand name. Took like a lot of people to come up with that one. Peanut Delight, creamy peanut butter. Here we go. I'm really full. I had a big dinner tonight. I'm gonna like do this right, you know. I'm gonna like put the spoon in. It's definitely a little bit of a different like consistency than Jif. How is it, Maggie? It's not bad. How does it compare to Jif? Honestly, um, it's like really hard to talk with the peanut butter in your mouth. I mean, honestly, if you were to do a blind taste test between this and Jif, might be able to tell the difference, but I don't really know. I mean, like I wouldn't put money on being able to tell the difference between the two. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's probably produced by the same group. All right, I'm glad we did this. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm still getting the peanut butter out of my mouth, though. Okay, how do we get on peanut butter? Oh, store brand. Yeah. Got it? All right, let's move on. Next tip. Okay, next tip. Do not buy non-grocery items like toiletries at the grocery store unless you know they're cheaper because they often are not cheaper. So a lot of things like shampoo and soaps and other things like that, they usually are cheaper at Target or somewhere like that. So just kind of keep an eye on that and check and don't just throw random things like that in your cart if it doesn't make sense to. And if you're going to the grocery store every week, you will have the opportunity to check the price of these things and know if you're getting a better deal. I know Aldi has some toiletry stuff, and some of them are cheaper. Not all of them, but some of them are. Yeah, it's funny that you, you mentioned pricing because we, we talked about this in the beginning a bit, but I think you know one of the more important pieces that may have been glossed over a bit is just the idea of actually checking prices. So... I know, for example, like there are certain foods that we eat large volumes of, like Kashi cereal. My husband eats a ridiculous amount of it. And I know that the cheapest price is between Trader Joe's and Target. It's $2.99 a box at either one of those stores. And sometimes it's on sale at Target. And at any other store like Publix, Kroger, it's usually like $3.50 to $4 a box. So I just sort of know in my head that there's certain products that we'll buy large volumes of and they're cheapest at certain types of places. Like we also buy a lot of cashews. I'm sure you don't want to hear all this. Point is, <laughs> Mike was like, I didn't want to hear all this an hour ago. Um, but the point is, there's it the point is What, what is, is the point, the point what Maggie? Is the point? I was just listening to one of our I was editing one of our episodes and I was I like I, I can't remember my point most of the time. The point is pay attention to prices. It matters and it's the sort of thing where the more cognizant you are of what the prices are of things, the more you will save money over time because you'll make much more conscious decisions about what to buy and what not to buy and when to buy things and where to buy things. Another important tip is that you should try to avoid pre-prepared or pre-cut food as much as possible because you will pay a premium for that labor. This is such a scam. Every time I'm like, especially at Whole Foods, they'll have a thing of like cut up mango. This isn't just Whole Foods, Publix, anywhere like cut up fruit and it'll be like eight dollars and i'll turn to my right and i'm like that's about two mangoes that would cost me three dollars and then about one minute of my time to cut that mango up and it's going to taste a little bit better because it's fresh cut how busy do you have to be to not have one minute to cut up your mango i don't know the people i see buying that stuff i'm like man you must be balling just like a gazillionaire buying that cut up mango this also goes for pre-made pasta salads and all the other things that they have in the grocery store. It is expensive. Other thing, do not buy bottled water. It's just a big waste of money. It's not good for the environment. It's single-use plastic. It's incredibly expensive. It just it, I just don't understand why anyone would buy it. If you're that worried about what is in your water, which I am for what it's worth, like we own a Berkey, which is a, a fairly high-end water filter. Of course you do. I don't know. I don't know how much it, it was actually a gift from my mother-in-law for Christmas one year. Um, but we asked for it. It was something we wanted. And I don't mean high end as an expensive. I mean, like you could pour dirty creek water into it and drink it. And it has very sophisticated filtering system or something. That sort of thing, if you were buying bottled water, that Berkey would pay for itself within one year, just from the amount you'd cut out. from. So you said something that, that really bothers me a lot this is my when, funny math no 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 when when yeah. i hear things like this when it comes to bottled water specifically there's all these ads that say it will pay for itself assuming you buy bottled water all the time if you just don't buy bottled water then well you're that not was saving. my point of that was my point of like it's funny math so yes if you're comparing tap water to like you are not saving the berkey does not save you money what would save you money is just drinking the water out of your faucet 
I'm just saying, if you can afford to have some sort of a water filtration system and that's important to you, go for it. Do that. That is way more cost effective than buying bottled water. Also, aside from the cost, everybody knows it and it's been talked about a lot in the past year. Single use plastics, terrible for the environment. And that is what bottled water is provided in. Huge caveat that's important here, Mike. Sparkling water. It's okay. That's important. We actually have a soda stream because we drink so much sparkling water. So I did, and I'll share my spreadsheet with you. Um, during Black Friday, there were a lot of soda stream deals, and we considered buying one. And I did a detailed spreadsheet comparing the cost of the CO2. Is that what it is? The, mm-hmm. fil- the uh, right. cartridges and the and the soda stream itself, and the actual cost of bottled water and we would not save money with it um did you consider the fact that places like target will allow you to exchange the co2 cartridges for significantly less cost i did not consider that how about we update your spreadsheet later and i'll show you that it's actually a good deal plus you save a ton of plastic yeah i will say well in, in our case it's um aluminum cans but still we would save that all right so the next tip is kind of an obvious one Eat all the food you buy. Don't waste food because then you're just throwing money away. Additional ways to make sure that you don't waste food and don't ever let things go bad. I eat what's expiring first and I teach my kids to do the same thing. So sometimes they want to eat something and I say, no, you can't eat that until you eat this, which you already wanted and picked out a week ago. And that's going to go bad first. I make them eat the fruit that's about to go bad first. And then they can move on to the other things. And we do the same um, with ourselves. We also freeze a lot of our fruits and vegetables as they're going bad so that we can then put them in smoothies later. Maggie, do you ever like to challenge yourself to go through your pantry and just eat as much as you can without shopping? I do. And I call it the pantry challenge. I don't think I made that term up, though. Let's let's just assume that you did. Um, Yes. And actually, like now is a really great time. Like when I just saw that in March we spent $857 on groceries, I immediately think, okay, I think I could eat for weeks on what's in my pantry. I just need to be a little more thoughtful and plan ahead for it. And I maybe could subsidize it with just some fresh fruit and milk and bread and things like that. But even, even bread and stuff that we may have frozen, we could get through for a while on. And so I love the idea of every now and then doing a pantry challenge just to work through like the backlog of things that you don't realize are in your pantry. And there's a couple really good resources for that. There's a website called myfridgefood.com, which we'll put a link to show notes in. And then there's Pinterest, which I know you're all familiar with. And I will just search when I have like, I'll have lentils or something. And I'll think like, okay, what can I make from with lentils? And I'll just search lentil recipe, vegan lentil recipes on Pinterest. And I'll get, you know, a hundred ideas for things I can make. My fridge food is cool because you can put in like four random ingredients that you happen to have. You can be like, I have an onion, lentils, beef. I don't, I don't eat meat, so I don't know what, what type of meat to name. Chicken. I don't know. Something. You have four ingredients and it will give you ideas for recipes that use those ingredients, which I think is a brilliant little app that they built. What about you? Do you ever do the pantry challenge? Uh, Yeah, all the time. Because we always, you know, you always like you buy cans or jars of stuff and then things start to like find their way to the back. And then all uh-huh. of a sudden something's been sitting there for six months. and You're like, I didn't even know I had this. So periodically, yeah. we, we like to kind of like pull stuff out, take stock, try to work our way through it. Yeah. I actually really hate having too much food on, like dry food. I, don't, I hate having too much of it on hand. Yeah. Because I just feel like it's it's stuff that's going to go bad that I'm going to forget about. It's, it's, it, it's the same idea with physical stuff in my life. And it's funny because with all the corona stuff going on lately, we did buy a lot of extra food. And so now I'm like feeling a little stressed. Like I have like all this food that I need to work through. When it seems like I'm still going to be able to go grocery shopping during this time. so. But would you want to go grocery shopping? I don't. I did go to Trader Joe's last week. It was very... They, I was really impressed at how safe they were making the environment. But it was really weird. There were so few people in the store. And it was just... It's unnerving. Yeah, it was odd. It just sort of reminded you what's going on right now. But I I'll shout out to Trader Joe's because they did a fantastic job of just kind of how they're cleaning the carts and only letting a certain number of people in the store and everyone's being very respectful about social distancing. Okay, last interesting just grocery comment is one of my favorite sites, and there's a lot of YouTube videos from uh, this person, is from funcheaperfree.com. 
Um, Jordan Page is the woman who um, started that site. And she just has a lot of really great tips. She has a lot of kids. Like, I don't know how many now, but like seven or eight or something. She just had twins. And she has a lot of really good tips specifically focused on grocery shopping and how to kind of like make food last longer and keep yourself on a budget and stretch your budget as far as possible with groceries. That sounds great. I'm, I'm going to check it out. Yeah, it's a great, great resource. All right. So let's wrap this up with our top three tips. First tip. Believe it is possible to find better deals by trying some other grocery stores. Number two, plan ahead through making a list, doing meal planning, checking to see what is already in your pantry or whatever else might let you plan ahead to be prepared for your trip. And the third tip, pay attention to prices. Be thoughtful about how much you are spending per ounce, per item, and what things cost between different stores. Okay, let's let's uh, wrap this up. I hope that was helpful to inspire and encourage people to think about how they can save money on a expense line item that totals probably five to fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for some families. That's a lot of money on groceries. Yeah, it's a big expense category. You could buy a car every year for that amount. Wow! So imagine if you can cut that down by twenty five percent. You know, that's thousands of dollars you're saving. All right. Big opportunity. Okay. Let's do Mike's Minute on the Mic. Let's do it. So we did an update on this a few episodes ago. I don't even remember on which episode. And I'm going to cover something on our Mike's Minute for this one. Okay. What does that mean? I don't know what my problem. I don't don't know. I'm not sure. Is that a question? Okay. So just, I'm not sure. So just as a reminder, this is where I get to ask Mike one surprise question for 60 seconds. And we did a quick update on this one a while ago, but it was about a month ago when we recorded it. But we started a $5,000 investment competition at the beginning of January. We are now right at the end of March. We're a couple days from the end of March. And neither one of us expected what is going on in the stock market right now. But a competition is a competition, Mike. So I'd like to know what is happening with your $5,000. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what you decided to buy with it on January 1st? Woof. All right. So I bought Boeing, which was one of the hardest hit stocks in this downturn. It was just, I, I couldn't believe how terrible of a decision it was to buy this. I have the biggest grin on my face right now. Not because, oh, sorry, this is your 60 seconds. Keep going. So I sold it at some point and I had lost so much money on it that I I don't think I had kept track of it. I think I was down 35% when I finally got out. Yeah. So it's not really an accurate competition because you, I mean, you're, you're allowed to move around the money, but we don't really know what would have happened to it. Well, we could just look at what Boeing, what happened to Boeing between January 1st and now and assume. Well, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. And I think it's sort of a forfeit, though. They got so bad that you actually had to sell it. No, no, no. This is... No, that is not a forfeit. So now it is down... You never 50, really wrote the rules down. It is down 51% now. I think wow. it was down like 75% before. So I got out when it was down around 35%. So I consider that pretty good, all things okay. considered. Well, my $5,000, since you asked... Just kidding, you didn't is now at $3,892. So I'm down 22%. Well, it looks like you're winning then. Or you won. Yeah. Is the game over? I think the, the game's, game's over. over in two days. So. All right. Well, you won, Maggie. Congratulations. Could you say that again? I'm not sure if the mic picked it up. You won. Oh, it just, it just, I just, I just, I, I mean, is this my time for an acceptance speech? No. Okay. Because I just, I didn't think there was any chance anywhere in this universe that I could win that competition. All it, so it took just... was a global pandemic for you to win the competition. <laughs> I don't, I'm not laughing at the global pandemic, to be clear. I'm just saying I would have bet you another $5,000 at the beginning of that competition that there was no way I could possibly win that competition against you. And so it's just sort of funny. Not that there's a global pandemic. That's not a laughing matter. But it's just funny that like something that, you know, no one ever predicted would or could have happened, happened in the middle of our 90 day competition. Congratulations, Maggie. You deserve it. 
This is like my hashtag pre-corona problems of things that I would have cared about pre-corona. And now I'm just like, I don't really give a crap. You only lost 20%. Great job. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, yay, I lost 22% and I won. I'm the winner. (laughs) All right. We we can wrap this one up. I hope this has been helpful to you guys in some way. If you have any questions or comments, give us a call or text us at 404-981-3370. Leave us a question, comment, or tip, and we will play it on the air. Please also leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this podcast. It really helps other people find our podcast, so we would appreciate it if you could leave us a review and let us know your thoughts. Thanks, Maggie. Thanks, Mike. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.